Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Savage here in my cave with Tested.com with another show and tell a piece from my collection. Um, earlier during the shelter in place, I, uh, I decided to build a sword rack to house some swords in my home office. And I was really pleased with that build. I loved the video that we shot with it. And I think I did an introduction to the five or six swords that were hanging on the rack, but I thought I'd do a deeper dive uh, into some of them. And today we're gonna do a deeper dive into this. My amazing replica uh, of the bride sword from Kill Bill. This is, there is accuracy in this that uh, surpasses a lot of other pieces in my collection. Um, and I wanted to tell you the story because it's well, it's all documented. Um, so how do I, I, I'm not even sure exactly where to begin. It begins with a lovely gentleman uh, from Canada named Jason Blakey. Uh, and Jason is a fellow member of the Replica Prop Forum. And back in 2010 or 2011, yeah, this is now 10 years ago, nine, 10 years ago, um, he posted some work he was doing with replicating a uh, Kill Bill sword. Uh, and he did a thread about it on the RPF. And I pinged him and said, would you be interested in a commission? Because I would really like an accurate replica of the bride sword. And I can see as I look at them, there's thousands of them on eBay. None of them are anywhere close. They're all missing all sorts of important details. And this being something that he particularly loved, um, Jason did a deep dive and I think it took the better part of two years. I'm pretty sure that it's 18 months to two years for this project to reach fruition. And many of my collaborations with people that I meet online, craftspeople that I meet online can take that long. And that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I ask my collaborators often to take lots of detailed pictures and Jason did. Um, and I actually, as I start to tell this story, I think you're gonna start to see some of these pictures because I've still got them. We're gonna cut them into this video. So I reached out to Jason and said, I would like a really accurate bride sword. And Jason said, well, there's this thing that I figured out, he said, is that sword making is very regulated in Japan. If you make real actual swords, you are only allowed to make a certain amount per year as a shop that makes those. However, Japan has a big sword culture. And so uh, there's a practice, Iado, I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly. I am probably not gonna pronounce any of the Japanese words in this video correctly because I've only read them. I've rarely heard them spoken. But Iado is the sword, is the art of drawing the Japanese sword. If, I'm, if I remember correctly. And as such, there is a big market in Japan for Iado blades that weigh the same as normal uh, uh, blades and actually are aesthetically pleasing, but uh, because they're not made from steel and folded to the traditional techniques, um, they are not as regulated. And what Jason figured out was he started to, he imagined the prop masters in Japan working on this film. And he realized, you know, maybe they ordered their stuff from vendors because all of these things, the 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 Minuki, the, the Saya, all of these pieces of the sword, there are different companies that make all sorts of different parts and pieces. And Jason went online and he found on a high-end site that sells Yado blades for the practice of drawing your samurai sword, he found a company that, he found the company. He found the company that made the blades for Kill Bill. And it, it wasn't even that they made specific blades. He, there are some super close-ups of Uma Thurman's sword blade, and you can actually match it to this company's catalog. Now it's not, this is not a cheap blade. I think I paid something like 600 bucks for this blade. It is magnesium. I think it's got magnesium and zinc and aluminum. It's an alloy. I, I, I can't remember all the different metals that make it up, but it is a beautiful looking blade. And it weighs apparently the same as a samurai blade. So it's a samurai blade as a, it weighs the same as a steel blade would. Um, 
And it makes sense that the prop makers went there because it meant that they could buy a bunch of these and all their swords would look the same, even for the close-up hero shots. So once Jason found the blade, uh, it was time to order it, which meant that he had to uh, he had to basically figure out all of these aspects of ordering hardware in Japan and getting it over to Canada, eventually getting it to me. Um, but as he started to do the research, he found he found catalog pieces with all of these, the little ring that goes underneath the, 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 the guard. I know it has Suba, the Suba, uh, this little ring with the, with the leaf detail on it. He found the catalog that sold these specific details that were the exact ones used on the sword. Then he found the company that made the little bronze Manuki on both sides. This is a detail that very few replicas get even close to. But it goes even deeper than that. So that is a fantastic foundation. We're now probably five or six months into this collaboration. Jason's keeping me updated. He's sending me pictures of these things. He's telling me what to order when I need to order something and have it sent to him. Um, and then there comes the question of, well, you know, you can't just order a handle, right? So now you have the blade, now we have to make the handle. So there's Jason and I looking at screenshots and counting the number of triangles, 13, if I remember correctly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and a half. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and a half. Yes. So then it became time to start matching that. Jason went so far as to find real ray skin, which is this white bumpy stuff that you can see between the wraps, the, the, the wraps on the handle. He bought real ray skin, not just leather, to do the wrapping with. And then, oh man, when you look at how a samurai, sorry, I keep saying samurai. When you keep, when you look at how a Japanese sword hilt is wrapped, you start to see that it is this just very beautiful origami of, uh, chiral wraps of the stuff as it goes around and it takes a long time and you've got to do it uh, under really specific conditions to get it to sit right and sit tight and Jason did all of this. Um, now, in addition to all these parts and pieces, there are some very specific things. So he found a, uh, a, a cheapo uh, a, a scabbard that fit the sword the blade, the Iado, the Iado blade. Um, and we were very lucky in that the brass, uh, this collar piece, again, has a name that I can't remember, um, very much matched the, the screen use sword because they were using the same parts. But the sword, the, the scabbard has um, markings on it. It has the, 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 this triangular marking and then it has this lion marking, which as far as I can tell, no replicas that you can buy online yet have this lion replica. This is the mother, this is Uma's protective mother lion. This is all about her daughter, right? The whole story of the movie is in this scabbard. There's this ring right here, which uh, Jason made in ABS and painted, and then I replaced it with a piece of brass um, years ago. The, uh, the And then there's the carving, the food dog carving, on the blade itself. Now, how do you do that? Traditionally, these carvings were done literally with a steel chisel in the same way that the blades were signed. Um, Jason wasn't going to learn engraving with a steel chisel anytime soon, but he was interested in setting up a CNC machine. So uh, as part of the collaboration, I bought him a DIY CNC machine. I'm pretty sure that's how that went. Uh, yeah, I, I, I bought him the parts and then he assembled his own CNC machine to do these three designs. And again, the collaboration was great. He kept on sending me designs. I had comments about how to make them look more like the one in the film, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There is one inaccurate part here, uh, which is that the same company that made these, these beautiful cast brass fittings uh, here and here, um, sold one to go on the end of the scabbard, but it was too big to go on the end of this scabbard that fits this blade. I don't know what the producers on the film did. We found something pretty close that I modified and it's not perfect, but it's as close as I think I'm gonna get anytime soon. Um, the, uh, the, the cord here is exactly like the film. It's actually double wide. It's sewn. Jason's wife, I believe, did that sewing. And 
what I end up with is not a real sword, not a screen used sword, but in every way, it is as accurate as possible. This is, this is as accurate as it could possibly be to the swords that Uma and the other cast members were slinging around on that set. Uh, and it is one of my favorite pieces. As you can see in these close-up B-roll shots, uh, you can see that it's beat up and that's kind of like, I, I'm not very precious with my pieces. I, I think that Uma's bride sword would be fairly beat up after all the travel she did with it. So I just consider it more authenticity. But getting those regular updates from Jason over 18 months of his progress and being party to a collaborator who was learning how to do what we were doing, what he was doing while we were doing it, while we were researching it, uh, it remains a wonderful high point for me in, in uh, seeking out a commission and finding a, a, a terrific collaborator uh, within, that, within that partnership. And, and, and what that yielded was one of my all time favorite replicas. Oh, there is a fun feature that most people don't get about the sword, which is this, these gold sides. And I think that the filmmakers, this is, I think, simply half inch wide gold mylar tape. Um, we bought a roll of it and whoop, it looks beautiful on here. Um, so, hey, if you're a company that makes bride swords and you'd like to make them more accurate, pay attention. Get this part right. Get the carvings, the two carvings in the in the scabbard, not just Bill's devil head. Make that foo dog a little bit deeper, man. I think Jason did a fantastic job at making this feel less like a computer carved uh, uh, emblem and much closer towards the hand carved. It is a really, really difficult thing to do aesthetically and he did an amazing job. Uh, yeah. I think that is all the facts that I know that I can recount to you about my bride's sword. It sits at the very top of my sword rack. And I am proud to be its steward for however long that ends up being. Because that's all we are. We are just stewards for these objects. Hopefully they outlive us, outlast us, and do things we never imagined. Thank you guys for joining me for this show and tell. I will see you next time.